first of all, Shane, I would like to welcome you to Calgary from our Ukrainian community. We're very pleased to have you here. I understand you've been here for two years. Yes. And are you enjoying Calgary itself? Calgary is a beautiful city. <laughs> Wonderful. And, uh, and, uh, and a Ukrainian community that is hungry uh, for uh, to, to celebrate Ukrainian traditions and Ukrainian uh, cultural aspects. So, well, you're the first person that, when I read your bio in the program, that said you just loved everything about being Ukrainian. You remember it from when you were a little boy, and that's how I have felt. And I always think that we're so lucky to be in Canada, where we could be as Ukrainian as we wanted. Absolutely. Um, kind of the, the, the basis of our show, it's, I find it's really easy uh, to be a, a second or third or fourth generation Ukrainian uh, living in Canada, where we go to the festivals, we, you know, we have our daiborzhes, we, we uh, so freely celebrate and take for granted our, our culture. Everything uh, twice. Every, Christmas, right. Easter. But you know, so our our our, our families in, in Ukraine, those who are still there in Ukraine, it hasn't hasn't always been the case to be able to no, celebrate, no. you know, such a wonderful and rich culture and tradition exactly. uh, with such freedom and and uh, and I do think that we take it for granted, and, and I think um, it's important as as uh, Ukrainians who live outside of Ukraine. Uh, to not only carry forward traditions, but um, you know, to remember that we, we left a world behind that still needs our help, that still needs the world to pay attention to uh, what is happening in Ukraine. And so that was, that was the, the inspiration for doing the show. Um, you know, we, we are not even last page news anymore. No. And this is a war that the world has forgotten. And, um, so if, if our, our politicians or our, our media aren't able to, uh, to follow this because of the distractions that exist within the world, you know, then, then I think it falls to the arts community and it, and it, and it falls to us to, to bring uh, to light and to educate and, and to try gain support from uh, our, our current uh, Canadian Ukrainians and hopefully you know, other people will either see the show or we can spread the news somehow. Little by little. Little by little. Do you remember the moment when you had the whole idea of the concept of this production and why Heroyam Slava? Like, were you in Canada? Were you in Ukraine? I had actually, I was in Ukraine while I was, uh, uh, when I had made the decision to, to work for Trizu and to create a show. And uh, I was at the Dnipro Hotel in Kiev, really? and uh, and with regularity, wounded soldiers would walk through the through the hotel, and I would have conversations with them, and and uh, and try to learn and try to understand what they are going through, not only just as soldiers, but their families, and 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 then it it, it, it struck me that you know, um, looking at old. Uh, Old Ukrainian dances like like Birsky staged Achoho uh, Verba Plache, you know, a very classic tale where a Cossack goes off to war. And I thought, you know what, I think this is an opportunity to, um, to contemporize uh, our show and, uh, and, and, and bring to light the, a current and real struggle that, that, that people, uh, people are facing in Ukraine. And I wanted to do it in a way that, you know, was not just about the war. So this the story starts with a, a, a celebration of an ancient ritual of, of Ivan the Kopala. One and, of the most beautiful. Right, and it's it's, it's like my favorite Mine traditions, too. right? I and do. and uh, and you know, some people thought it was a little bit too hard of a right turn to be in like Nietzsche Ivan the Kopala, and then all of a sudden be going to war. But the reality is, is that everyday people's uh, their, their everyday lives are being interrupted and and the, the war it is is not convenient it, it happens at you know the most beautiful points in people's lives it happens at when at, so we when you least expect that's it. right so I, I wanted to you know to have that type of a, a shock and well that's exactly it because I think when we became independent in 1991 first we thought we couldn't believe it, and then we never would have thought that 
this could have happened, like Taras just said, that that their neighbors would do what they're doing. The aggressors become the aggressors. You know what I, I think we always knew that it could happen. <laughs> history, um, history, history shows us yes. that um, well, yes, that this type of thing true. happens. But if people stop talking about it, then it's easier to have that history repeat. And so, you know, I, you know, whatever small part that I can play, um, whether it's creating a show or or whatever I can do, I, those are, you know, I think it's the responsibility of all Ukrainians uh, to educate themselves and 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 to show support to to our families and and uh, those Ukrainians who are still in Ukraine. Well, and you did the right thing because it's true through the art, like through movies, like look at what Schindler's List did for the Jewish problem. I think that it opens the eyes of those that that uh, aren't aware of it in an in entertainment way. But thank you so much. I was privileged enough to sit at the front of the concert hall when I turned around at the most emotional part. Everyone was mesmerized and crying. And there's nothing better than those tears of sadness, yet joy and hope. Hope that Ukraina bude vilna. Absolutely. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Thank you.